had to let the I had to let the bass tracks ride a little bit longer, you know? The, the intro song is a uh it's EXO Tour Life. If anybody is a Lil Uzi Vert fan, uh, this is an instrumental group. Uh, you know, gotta be a fan of the horns. You know, I really love instrumentals. I really like instrumental music. So we had to let it ride for a little bit longer, but what's up? Welcome everybody. Welcome to Mastermind Academy. Uh, start of another series. Happy Tuesday. Everyone been a little while for some people, been, you know, a little over a week. If you were participating in Mastermind Academy, uh, for people who are new to the channel, we just got done doing uh, two eight week sessions. Um, one in software engineering, that one is called Decoded. Uh, the other one is in cloud computing called Horizons. We just got done with those. Uh, the first eight week sessions of those is actually gonna be three eight week sessions for a total of 24 weeks. Uh, those are our journeys that we're gonna be going on uh, and those will continue. More information will be coming out about those. But tonight we're here with a new excursion, a shorter journey tonight. Um, tonight we were starting Contained. Last night we started one which was called Waddle, uh, you know, Foundations in Linux. Uh, Linux, you know, the, the mascot's the penguin. That's why it's called, um, that's why it's called Waddle. This one is called Contained because Docker is containers and we're gonna be learning all about containers tonight as well as Docker. So it should be pretty fun. Uh, definitely hit exclamation point contained. Uh, it should give you a link um, to, we're gonna be trying to use Notion for this. Um, and it should take you to a Notion page and that Notion page you can save for these three weeks. Um, Let's put back on the stream beats before I get copyright striked or DCMA'd. Um, let's put on the, the free stream beats. Let's put that on this, let's hit next. All right, but yeah, uh, it should take you there. You should be able to click on the link. You should be able to see what's in there. Uh, each day, uh, we will get a, uh, there'll be a new link in there for the next day, which will have uh, slides, it'll have various links. Today, there's not that much for contained because this is focused on a singular technology, uh, whereas the one from yesterday, Waddle had a few more, had some videos and stuff, but there will be more as we go along. There'll be more and more content uh, in that section. So check that out. Um, pipelines, yes, angry, an angry mohawk. At, well, first, you know, we have a lot of people who are, who are back. Um, two things, first, Sad news, let's get the sad news out of the way. Gotta take a quick moment of silence for our stream protector. Uh, last week we lost Maya uh, on Sunday, actually. So just to take a quick, you know, a couple second moment of silence, and, you know, to, to, to pay our respects to our stream protector. All right. Uh, so unfortunately, like I said, she was sick. Uh, I think we all, we all knew she was sick for a while. Um, so that's why I actually didn't stream at all last week. I was planning on coming back on Wednesday, but just wanted to take some time with that. Um, so bad news out of the way, good news. Well, another set of bad news is pipelines. Great question about pipelines. Pipelines is going to be, uh, is not going to be starting again for 50, at least 55 days. So, um, uh, due to some time constraints and to do to some things to get ready for not only pipelines, but um, I'm actually moving to, again to doing to doing this full time or not mastermind academy, but mastermind as an as a business uh, full time. Um, some things are going to be happening in the next 60 days uh, to prepare for that. So I'm actually pretty tight on time. Um, but I promise you all, uh, I'm, I'm actually working on pipelines and integrating pipelines into the rest of the uh, to the journeys as well. And so we'll be starting pipelines back up, uh, likely right after that happens. So right at the beginning of September is when we will start pipelines back up. Um, I'll have concrete dates for you uh, in the coming in the coming weeks. But like I said, I have about 60 days to kind of finalize some things and to get ready for my full time move into uh, entrepreneurship. So uh, that is the update on that. We'll be doing this and a few other things in the meantime. Um, I will not be taking any more stream breaks. Uh, I'm probably gonna take only stream breaks at the end of every uh, set of excursion uh, of, of journeys. So at the end of those eight week sessions is when we'll take about three to four days off um, and then we'll always hop back into it. But yeah, all dogs go to heaven, 100%. Like I said, it's been something all year. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's a thing. But appreciate that second billing cycle, really do. YGBSM, you know, I, I, I appreciate the kind words for sure. Um, you know, one day, you know, after we get even deeper into the entrepreneurship world, once we get a little stable, um, definitely going to be, uh, looking at picking up another pup. Uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of quiet around here, you know, it's a little bit sad, but, uh, you know, I think me and me and me and the wife are doing pretty good. What's up, Richard Hurst? How you doing tonight? 
Um, but yes, welcome again to everyone. Welcome to Contained, a Docker deep dive. Again, if you've never been to the channel, this is Mastermind Academy, where uh, the only goal is to uh, be able to scale access to technology, to be able to scale access to uh, technical education. And we cover all things um, that are part of the software development lifecycle. So a, a real focus on software and infrastructure uh, and kind of everything that kind of um, lies in, in that realm. I'm going to be doing web development, going to be doing other things that are uh, non coding related, um, things like a project and product management in the software industry, as well as UX and UI. I will not be doing those things, but they are on the radar. So if you're interested in any of those things, this is the place to be like subscribe all those things that people tell you to do on the internet i don't really you know i'm still bad at that stuff but yeah uh scared of docker do not be scared of docker tonight uh we're gonna start the process of making docker a lot less scary um but yeah let's uh usually we get people to around 7 10 to really get started but like i said go ahead and click on that link that link should take you to uh so let me log in without doing authy actually i don't even need to be on here I can pull troll I can pull this up over here and it should take you to this where you can click this and then you'll get your slides and you'll get a couple of links. I really do like notion. And if I can figure out how to use notion a little bit better, um, I might actually use this, um, going forward completely as a, as a place, um, I don't want to say instead of Google classroom, but for the, but probably instead of Google classroom, um, only because I think there'll be links out to, to exams and things, but I actually like that people don't have to log in and, and do all the other stuff. It was always a hassle with classroom codes and stuff. It might be nice to give people a link that has the structure of all the course where again, each day I can add in, uh, the new thing to where they can get all the links, all the other stuff, uh, a lot easier for me to manage than Google classroom, but you know, we, we operate, uh, we're, we're agile over here. So, you know, we'll try something out. We'll see how it works. If we love it, we'll keep it. The things we don't like will change. Um, so we're gonna try this out a little bit and see how this works over the next uh, three weeks. Um, so go ahead, let me know if you have access to the slides. Uh, should give you, I see people in here, so we should have access. No LaCroix tonight. Unfortunately, I'm all out of LaCroix. I gotta, I gotta hit the store. He boy's been not lazy at all, um, but I said super busy um, with this with this kind of clock countdown going on, taking care of a lot of things, all good stuff. You know, things are happening, things are moving. Um, but yeah, also something that came out of yesterday's stream. Um, tomorrow, I will be figuring out a way to. Um, so, Mastermind is much bigger than Mastermind Academy. Um, uh, we're also in the technical recruiting space uh, or we'll be in the technical recruiting space uh, as well as some other things. Um, more information will come out exactly um, about everything that we do as it pertains to uh, we have a we have a B2B side of things and we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, an out to the public side of things. So um, more information will be coming out about exactly what those things are. But people have been asking like, hey, uh, how do I get in contact with you? You know, I'm, I'm pretty bad at email. I'm pretty bad at managing all of my messages. I'm getting better at that. But I will have a concise way to get to all of you um, and to respond, to get your response within 24 hours. I'm gonna tell you what that process is. A lot of what I'm doing right now is setting up those processes. So tomorrow, uh, that process is almost in place. I've kind of chosen. It was really just choosing what I wanted it to be. Um, but I'll be announcing that on tomorrow's stream and I will announce it as well on Thursday. So if you have any questions, if you are looking for a job, if you have any questions just about your path, um, and kind of the, you know, what you should do next or what to learn if you're, tr you know, at, while you're trying to navigate your technical career, um, reach out hundred percent, reach out. Um, that is, that's what mastermind is here for, uh, just to, just to help. It's not a, it's not a pay to play thing. You don't gotta pay for time with me or anything like that. Not at all. Uh, just reach out and I will, uh, I'll help out, but yeah, notion more than Google classroom. I agree. And as I learn to use notion better, um, I think it'll be really cool because I can also use it to add in, like I can add in things, you know, afterwards much more easily. And I don't know, it's just a little bit easier to do. And I think I like notion as well, but 710, let's get started. Normally our journey classes are about two to two and a half hours. Uh, these will not be the case. Uh, these should be between an hour and a half 
in two hours um tonight may be a little bit shorter but uh about an hour and a half to two hours each night um the rest of the nights after tonight should fall in that realm um they're gonna be pretty hands-on uh these excursions these shorter six week uh three week excursions well they're gonna be between three and five week um they will be designed to go deeper into individual topics so we've never spent this much time on uh, a single technology usually it is in a you know we're usually covering a discipline where a technology like this exists and we get to touch on it for one one or two classes uh, but it's really designed to go deeper right now we're doing linux and docker there's a git one coming up as well uh, but there'll be a few others there's also going to be a forum to uh, or a way for you to vote on what topics you'd like to um have excursions on so we can go through and develop those and get those ready just because there's a lot of you know uh, there's a lot of topics that it really sucks to be able to go through like when we go through pipelines or when we're going through the devops course it sucks to only be able to spend one day on this stuff so with all that out of the way we're going to present this tonight and we hold on one second we can get going Excellent. So like I said, tonight starts contained Docker deep dive, a six week excursion into Docker. Uh, what's up, Vassal? Thank you so much for the second month in a row. I appreciate that. The two months. Appreciate the support. Good to have you. Today is day one of six. Again, three weeks, two times a week, six days. You know, we're good at math. Sometimes usually we use uh, we use some uh, coding languages to do it for us. But what are we covering today? Uh, today's topics we're gonna be covering it uh, what containers are so what are containers and you might say hey I thought we were coming to learn docker again docker is a container uh, it's, a it's a container technology we'll learn about what containers are uh, we'll learn about what is docker and why is it so popular I, I think this is one of the biggest questions why is it so popular why do people keep talking about it why should I learn it we'll talk about that we'll spend some time learning the docker lingo uh, because there are a lot of terms uh, and docker and it's really important to understand the differences between them and understand what they are and then we'll just get docker installed and do a docker hello world um get do the docker hello world container or whatever um just to kind of get us ourselves up and running um yes tonight is we're not going to be too we're not going to be super hands-on with docker besides the installation um because i don't want to throw too much at you in a single day trust me starting on thursday you'll be getting a lot of it um and the way that this is designed uh we're actually going to be getting pretty um it's not just going to be hey learn this command do this thing um we are going to be uh i hope that the format that i've created for it is uh, applicable to the real world um and we're actually going to be um you know reverse engineering an application showing you how to dockerize you know an existing application how you might do that and we're going to be you know putting together some real things that are actually going to be useful in the real world She's the boss. Thank you so much for gifting that sub. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Smoothie, how you doing? Oh, perfect. So fasten your seatbelts. Let's get going. Hold on. I need to, you know, the ever dirty glasses. I'm finally going to get some new glasses. I promise, you know, uh, I've had these glasses for about four years. Um, and only reason is because I went to get two pair and they gave me four. They ordered them twice for some reason. So I got four pairs for free. Well, I got two pairs for free, pay for two. Um, and you know, you break a pair of glasses, you have three more left. Uh, so they're two different styles. I hate the other style to be hundred percent honest. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get some new glasses. I need them. These are not, these are cheap lenses. They got all the stuff on them. They don't have anti-glare coating. It's pretty whack. So we're gonna get some good stuff. What's up SpaceX Jedi? How you doing today? Good to have you. Warby Parker, I might check it out. I definitely might check it out. Uh, Hussy Far, um, the schedule, you can check out uh, Academy. I need an actual, if you go to academy.mastermind.io uh, and go to the individual course, it should tell you what day it is. I need to make a schedule uh, that I really do. I don't have one right now, um, but this one is on contained. This Docker one is on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the next three weeks at seven o'clock. I always stream at seven. Um, and, and I pretty much only stream Monday through Thursday um, and that's 7 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're in a different time zone um, and then Monday and Wednesday uh, for the next three weeks is going to be uh, the Linux one is Waddle, the Linux Foundations course. Um, and then more will come uh, pretty soon after that. Zenny Optical, I'll check those out. I'll definitely check those out. 
All right, so let's get going and start talking about containers because you need to understand the concept of containers as we're going through this. And I don't have the iPad up here, but I will get that next time. So what are containers? And if you're new here, uh, we we usually start out the night with a, a textbook Wikipedia definition or a definition from, you know, the actual website. There aren't many of these after right now. Um, there aren't many of these after right now. This is, you know, we start out with this because it's really good uh, to kind of set a baseline and then break it down from there. But what are containers, Linux containers? Uh, in short, contain applications in a way that keep them isolated from the host. And if you're taking notes, what I want you to do first is write down isolated. Uh, that is a very important piece of what a container does. Uh, we'll talk about isolation as we get a little bit further. I know words like this can be super intimidating, um, but we're gonna break all these things down. We're gonna break down what a host is, a host system is, and so don't worry about that. But they are a way simply to run applications in a way that keeps them isolated from the host system. Uh, containers allow a developer to package up an application. So start in your mind, start to visualize kind of what this looks like. Maybe if it was an application, maybe, you know, you, when you see package up, you know, act like you're packaging up some food or about to send a package off, but a way for a developer to package up an application with all of the parts that it needs, such as libraries and other dependencies and ship it out all as one package. So a lot of words there. A whole lot of words there, but read through them, uh, start to think about them. Maybe you don't know what a library is. Maybe you don't understand what dependencies are, um, but not important. Uh, right now, what's important is that a developer takes all the things that they need for an application to run. An application is just something like your Microsoft Word or, or any of the apps you're using on your phone. Um, those all need certain things to make them run and containers are a way to package them all up and ship them all out all together so that whoever they get to um, can use them or, um, or can run them. And so this is a pretty cool thing. Uh, it sounds pretty simple. Uh, if you're not familiar with application development and kind of the old way, and we'll talk about the, we'll talk about the, you know, what you do when you're not using containers. Um, this is really, this is really nice. Uh, it is, it's, you know, it's a relatively, you know, not new concept, um, but it's a, it's a, it's a relatively newly adapted uh, to an actually used concept because Linux containers have actually been around for a while. What's up, Aya? All right, number two, let's define some of these words that we talked about. Said a lot of stuff, said that, you know, this is containers are a way of running an application which isolates, um, you know, this application away from the host system. So what is the host system? Now, if you were on last night with Waddle, you'll learn, you, you learned a little bit about virtualization um, and so this is a common term in virtualization, but the host system or the host operating system is the software on a computer that works with the underlying hardware. So just think about this as the, the operating system that is installed on your computer. So, um, on Mac, on your Apple MacBook, uh, you have Mac OS installed on there. That is your host operating system. Uh, I'm running windows. Well, you saw a Linux computer, but on my big desktop that I have right here, I'm running windows and that's my host operating system. That's going to uh, be interacting with my hardware. It's the, it's, the, it's the layer that interacts with my hardware. Um, and so well, last night we talked about ghost, I, I mean, not ghost, uh, guest operating systems. And so in virtualization, when you virtualize a computer, um, you have these guest operating systems and they operate, you know, from the host operating system, but your host system is just the, 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 the main computer that this application is running on. Uh, it's the, it's the operating system that is interacting with the hardware. Oh, Mr. Smoothie, we are going to talk about that for sure. Um, that, cause that's always a great question. We'll talk about the differences between a virtual machine and containers. Um, because it is, uh, it's pretty important to know. It's also a common question that comes up. Uh, in positions that uh, where containerization is really key. Uh, I, I've seen this question come up a lot, so we'll definitely get into that. Um, all right, so libraries, and you might hear this all the time, especially in terms of Docker, uh, people talk about libraries, but these are just extra tools and functions pulled in to help support your application. So because code is code, it is, it, it's reusable actually. And what libraries are is they are tools, um, for th that you can use in a, whatever language, maybe you're writing a Python application, uh, and you, you can pull in 
other people's usually other people's code or your own code um um kind of externally uh that have different tools and things that you can utilize to make your code better and so that you don't have to rewrite things on your own um and so you can pull these libraries into your code again to get some extra functionality and a lot of times they're coming from a lot of external places um and so libraries are usually used you know in applications and usually there's a number of libraries that are used to be able to make an application run and so uh sometimes it's difficult to manage these libraries and uh let's say i wrote an application um and i used 20 different libraries and i said hey here's the code for my application and i want you to run it on your computer uh, for you to run it on your computer you'd have to uh, install you know whatever technology you needed like if i was if i wrote it in php for some reason you'd have to install ph the right php version and stuff and then you'd have to install all of the libraries that i use to make my code run you'd have to install all of those things um and that can be it can be a big hassle um and so libraries are what they're talking about these are what they're talking about when we talk about libraries and dependencies uh dependencies can be libraries um but they're just tools and technologies that are needed for the application to work sometimes they're libraries sometimes they are other pieces of code um there are other pieces of things that your code depends on and uh, like i said the you know libraries falls under dependencies uh but there might be some other things in there as well so all the things that your that your code that your application depends on to run uh this is what they're talking about when they talk about dependencies and so containers are a way for a developer to package up all of these things into a nice little package and deliver it elsewhere to be run which is really nice and again you might say hey that just makes sense like why would i ever give you not everything that you need well um yeah uh, yes great question and we'll see that live maybe we'll see it live tonight maybe that'll be a part of what we can get through a little bit tonight Okay, so this is the question that Mr. Smoofy just asked. This is the question that everyone asks, and I hate, I actually despise this this uh, this infographic. I, I hate it. Why do I hate it? I hate it because it's a good infographic that people rely on to explain this, but like, until you, the infographic doesn't make sense, I think, until you already understand the topic. But we're gonna keep it here, and we're gonna use it. This is why I wish I had my iPad here um so i could draw a little bit but on the left is where we have machine virtualization these are vms this is uh you know by far the most popular way things uh, have been handled uh in the past few years um you know oh well for a long time virtualization is super important it's not going to go away uh but what is machine virtualization machine virtualization is taking one computer uh and using it to you know splitting it up and virtualizing other computers uh, so a computer needs hardware um and you're able to use software to um to create space for other computers uh for virtual computers so you can take one big computer and in this example we are chopping it up into three different computers uh just in this example which it may be 10 different computers as many computers as your resource will allow and so this is kind of how it works uh you install a piece of software called a hypervisor to do this now um we talked about um, a type one versus type two hypervisor yesterday that is not important here but imagine uh, the infrastructure that is right here imagine this to be your computer imagine this to be your laptop your macbook your dell whatever it is imagine just your computer that's the infrastructure hypervisor is a piece of software think like windows but the software is designed to allow you to virtualize uh, machines on that computer so uh there's a piece of software uh sitting here called a hypervisor it's installed on your hardware and now on here, you can install other virtual computers. So see this guest OS here? This guest OS is talking about an operating system. An operating system like Linux, like Mac, like Windows. So imagine we have a, you know, a piece of software here that allows us to virtualize things. And now on this one computer, a single computer, we have Mac installed, we have Windows installed, and we have Linux installed. Now that sounds very heavy, right? Yes, absolutely. It is pretty heavy, but you can do that. That's what virtualization does. It's really nice. There's a number of reasons for it. Uh, definitely dig into virtualization if you want, but that's kind of how it happens. And so if an application is running on this server to get it to run, we got to install all the binaries and libraries and all the dependencies for app one to run here. And same thing 
for here and the same thing for here. Now, that's great, all good, you know, that's the that's kind of the normal way of computing, you know, install the stuff you need and run the application. What containers does, uh, what containers do, um, is c containers have the same, you know, infrastructure. So imagine your, your computer again, your Dell, your MacBook, whatever. Um, now you have an operating system installed on here, uh, which, which is, you know, slightly equivalent to this hypervisor slightly. Um, and in some cases it is, uh, but actually that would add another layer onto this graph, but we'll, you know, not important right now, but your operating system, that's windows, that is Mac, that is Linux. And so right now uh, I have, you know, windows on here. Then you install a container engine. There are multiple container engines. Docker is the one that we're talking about. That's why it's in blue here. Docker is the one that people love so much right now. And then you jump up a little bit and you can see here that for each app, we have the same blocks up here. So we have these little blocks here, but we're missing these guest operating systems. And this is the part that is really nice. So a container does not need an, it does not need uh, an underlying operating system in the way that a virtual machine does. Uh, what it does is these, this is this, all the green stuff right here is one container. What it does is all these containers share, um, you know, they, they send, they send information through this container engine that talks down to the infrastructure, uh, and is able to, uh, to the operating system and the infrastructure. So, all these containers are sharing the heart of the computer. They're sharing the operating system. They're sharing the things that interact with the hardware. Uh, they're sharing all that stuff in Linux. This would be the kernel. Uh, they're sharing the same kernel. Uh, and so they're a lot smaller because this is really heavy. Like uh, uh, an operating system is very, very heavy. I think Windows needs something like 18 gigs or something to install. Uh, it's very heavy, it has a lot of overhead. Um, and so you're getting rid of, of this entire layer of overhead when you get over here, which is really nice. Um, that's why these blocks are pretty large because again, they're very heavy. There's a lot of overhead here. So um, all you need to do is install a container engine and you can run the containers that you need to run uh, as opposed to having to install a guest OS. And this is the main difference. Again, container containers, they all share the same uh, in Linux in particular, uh, even Windows, Windows has a kernel as well. Mac is a Unix-like operating system. They share that kernel. Uh, they do not need their own individual operating systems underneath of them to run, uh, which is really nice. Now, I think someone else in the chat asked earlier uh, that this hypervisor can also be an OS. Yes, that um, the hypervisor can run on top of a traditional OS. Uh, that would be type two virtualization, uh, that'll be a type two hypervisor. So yes, you could have another block. This operating system block could also be right under, could be in between these two things. And then the hypervisor like VirtualBox, which I'm running here, uh, would be there and this same thing would apply. And the stack would get even larger and will look even heavier. Um, and so mach machine virtualization can be, uh, you know, it just can be really heavy. Isn't it illegal to run Mac OS on anything but Apple hardware? Um, I don't know if it's illegal. Um, I, I know it's uh, it's frowned upon. Um, it's also gonna go away pretty soon. Um, well, relative in a couple of years because of Apple's move to their own silicon. I, uh, you know, it's gonna make it almost, it, it might make it impossible to run it on, you know, virtualize it or run it on a Hackintosh or whatever, but we'll see. We will see. Kubernetes is just as good. We'll talk about Kubernetes. We'll talk, we'll talk about Kubernetes. But the containers can be different operating systems, right? Steven Yeet. Um, this is one of the biggest misnomers. This is one of the biggest problems when dealing with uh when dealing with these things. So um there are Windows containers. There are Windows containers, um, Windows specific containers because Windows is different. But um I think what you're asking is sometimes people will see a container that's called Ubuntu or a container that's called CentOS. And we talked about it yesterday, but a Linux distribution is not an operating system. Uh, the Linux is, the kernel really is, uh, but a distribution is really just a collection of packages and tools that are all you know packaged together, almost like a container, to be honest. Um, uh, and so that's all those are. They're a collection of tools rather than an operating system. They're not separate operating systems. Um, they're just a collection of tools. So no, um, no, they, they're, the containers themselves are not different operating systems. 
front images of the OS that you can download. Yeah, I know it sounds, I know it's, I know it's all, I know it's always confusing. It's very confusing, but it, they are not, uh, they are not different operating systems. Do you think Linux will gain a significant amount of market share with Mac moving to ARM? Um, no, to be honest, I do not. Um, and if you mean the Linux desktop, so Linux market share is already massive. Um, you interact with Linux every single day, but uh, the desktop market share, I don't think so. Um, I, I really don't. Hey, Rima, how are you doing? Do you have a YouTube channel? Yep, hit exclamation point YouTube. These will be up on YouTube probably at the end of the week. Um, and you can follow along there with, as well as all the past broadcasts are there. So the Windows versus Linux containers are just types of containers that don't actually have an OS installed. Correct. That, that is correct. They do not have an OS installed. That's why they are very small. Um, and we're gonna learn about, we're gonna see how small they are. But yes, it's a, it's a common, it's a Summersoft, like it's it's a comp, like the, the nomenclature, like you'll see a container that is called Ubuntu uh, and it'll be released by Ubuntu. And you might say, ah, oh, this is the Ubuntu operating system. And it's, 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 it's not, uh, but well, it kind of is because it, it kind of it kind of is only in that again a a an operating system in Linux a distribution in Linux is just a collection of tools and packages and applications. Uh, so I guess I mean yes, it is a Linux distribution really. Can you run two Docker containers on your machine using different uh, OSs? Yes. Um. Yeah. Uh, OSs. Yes, you can. Okay. So first thing, uh, one of the biggest things I want to talk about is that containers, it, the word container, containers is not equal Docker. Docker is not containers. Um, Docker is a container engine. It is a container runtime. Uh, there are other types of containers. There are other types of, yeah, there are other types of container technologies. Rocket being one, I think that's, you know, I've never used Rocket. I think it's RKT. Uh, I think it's a core OS product. Um, not really sure. LXE, uh, so Linux containers, containers have been around for a while. I believe LXE was first, uh, to be 100% honest. Uh, Docker's one, there are a bunch, there, there are a few others, a, a bunch have been popping up. To be honest, um, there have been some that have, you know, for your use case, maybe better for you than Docker. There are some that are very, that are extremely compatible with Docker, uh, with Docker files and things like that. Uh, I think RKT is, um, to be honest, but that part is important. Containers, do not equal Docker. Docker was not the first. I think Docker's timing was just right. Um, and you know, when it, when it kind of came out, people just, uh, people just took to it for some reason. People just took to Docker. Uh, there's probably some very specific reasons. I don't know those reasons. Um, if you want to look that up, have, have at it. Uh, but I, you know, I think it's a timing thing. I think marketing, I think the whale, you know, I think logos are important. Um, I think ease of use. Um, you know, helped a little bit. And, you know, we are where we are. Docker is a dominant technology. Um, yeah, it's a dominant technology. So it's it's pretty crazy how far it's come. Okay, that was part one. Does anyone have any questions so far about what we talked about, about specifically containers? We haven't talked about what Docker is itself yet at all. Uh, we just kind of talked about containers um, and kind of the world of containers. Anyone have any questions about those things before we move on? I'm gonna take a sip of the water. What's up, Cage Crown? What's up, Sin City? Can you run a container in a container? That is a great question. Um, there are ways to do some magic things. Um, there are ways. There are ways to do anything you wanna do, to be honest, but uh, no, but also yes, uh, you shouldn't. You shouldn't, but there are ways to. Um, it's not. A, it's not really a thing, though. It's not like a, really a thing that people do. Um, but someone has. People have figured out how to do it as a way to. I'm well, not even figured out. Like it's. A, it's a thing you can do, but no one does it. Yes, you can run a container in a VM. I will be running containers in VM. The stuff we're going to be doing is going to be in a VM. What's up, uh, massive G man 92 Twitch needs more of this. Twitch has a surprising amount of this. Um, but yes, I agree with you. Now you're speaking. Your, oh, what's up, bald bearded builder? How you doing tonight? Good to have you. Good to have you. You know, like I said, I, I caught, I, I finally caught one of your streams, um, not too long ago. Let me give you a little shout out. Uh, bald bearded, uh, bearded builder is a is a member of 
the live coders team does some dope stuff um bearded i can't type you know i'm a bad typist i always tell people you know fat fingers equals uh you know problematic things so yes we are talking about containers tonight they follow distro packing kernel version so different distro not os yep yep Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yes, uh, LXC, the rename of the OG Truth. Correct, you are right. It is not. I thought it. I thought it was. I thought it was SummerSoft. I. I really did think it was. Um, maybe, maybe it's not. I, I always. I always. I knew about Shroot, um for a long time, and then someone told me about Linux containers, and then I. I immediately uh, got LXC associated with it. And well, if it's not, I also. Uh, it was a good question, but I actually thought it was. Now I will look that up so I know for sure. Uh, yes, the slides are available. I think uh, someone shared it. You can just do contained, exclamation point contained if you need it. All the follows, thank you so much for the follows. Also, Summersoft, the gifted subs. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm too high up on the thing. Uh, first off, you absolutely get a VIP for that. Summer soft. Thank you so much for the gifted subs. I really do appreciate it. It really does uh, allow the channel to grow and to do more. I really do appreciate it. Everyone give Summersoft a hand first off and a, you know, a, a thank you. Everyone who got a gifted sub, please feel free to thank Summersoft personally because that's super dope, super generous. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Containers can be using, uh, can be using in different applications. Uh, yeah, yep. Containers can, yeah, they use different applications, yep. All right. So now let's talk about what Docker is and why Docker is so great. 736, perfect, right on time. So let's talk about what Docker is. Docker, you know, it debuted to the public in 2013. It's got this really cool whale logo over here. Uh, it's 2013, so not, you know, in the tech industry, that's not that, uh, that's not that, it's not that old. Like, that's pretty new. It's a pretty new product. Um, you know, if you started your tech career uh, 2013 or after, you know, it's probably something you've never touched um, because, you know, you, there's a million other things you were trying to learn as you were trying to get into the tech industry. And, you know, this is just another one of those cool technologies. Version 1.0 released in 2014. So really, when people decided to really start diving into this, the, the version that was kind of good to go uh, was written, I mean, was released in 2014. So really, again, six years ago, not long at all um so you know if you're if you're confused about docker or you're like man can't believe it took this long to learn docker you have not waited that long also if you see job descriptions that are like i want somebody with 20 years of docker experience you point them to these slides and say hey you're a liar and i can't be that person that you want me to be but i can be someone with less than 20 years of experience because it's been out for less than 20 years and you should tell them that and point them to this video because they're liars and they're mean and they don't know what they really want. Probably my favorite part about Go, I mean about Docker is that it was written in Go. If you are new here, you will uh you know that I'm a you will know that I'm a Go fanboy. I love Go. Go is, you know, it's something that I love. I like Go mostly because it's the programming language that kind of taught me uh what i was doing when i was coding you know i've been doing a lot of scripting i had learned how to write code but it wasn't until i dove into go where i started to really understand what it was that i was doing uh and i like you know i like the i like go's ethos and i like that they don't give you uh they give you just kind of what you need for the most part and sometimes it sucks uh but you know i really like it i think it's really readable um i think it's really cool i like how performant it is runs on linux windows and mac os is very important um it runs on all three systems so this makes it nice uh and this is going to tie into some things we're going to learn about uh docker in a little bit uh but it does run on linux windows and mac um mac windows has two kind of different options uh and maybe it's maybe it's new now uh, maybe it's changed but uh the windows version uh can run normal docker but there are also windows containers uh which can only run on windows uh, systems and I think you have to do very, something very specific to enable that um, but uh, Docker on Windows does run these Linux containers that actually ships with a little Linux kernel thing uh, there's been a bunch of 
changes inside of Windows recently that makes this a lot easier to do now, but we're gonna get into that during the installation phase, but it runs on all three, which makes it really nice. And again, the mascot is simply a whale uh, with some containers on its head. Uh, and so pretty cool, you know, and very exciting. It was a company. I do not think, I think the actual like for-profit company like went under uh, like last year or something. Um, and so I think there's like Docker org, like the organization is still fine. Or, okay, maybe they're still around. Uh, I thought they went under. I thought I read something that said they went under. I don't know. Uh, but Docker is an open source technology. So, uh, yeah, um, other people do contribute to it, but yeah. All right, let's see. Well, I had to reach out to another container for networking information. Containers are normally used to do one specific task. Well, perfect. Yes. Uh, the extra container and container was used to grab network information. Yes. Yes. Um, we're going to do exactly things like that. Um, pwned, pwned's end. Uh, we're gonna be doing exactly things like that in this course. So, um, NMI, I, 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 we'll be doing exactly that. So you'll be able to see that 20 years. I saw that on lab every day. I did see lab every day's post Richard. Um, yes, uh, that was pretty funny. I think it was about Kubernetes. It was like one, 14 years of Kubernetes experience. It's like, what does not make any sense? But you would be surprised at how many job postings you actually see like that. So what does go actually? Nope, not dumb at all. Uh, there are no dumb questions here. Ask away. Um, go is just a programming language it's a it's a more of a systems language written by it was born out of google um but um you know it's kind of it's it's thing it's its own thing but um yeah it's just a programming language um and it's kind of cool uh, it's pretty performant and it's pretty readable um and it's i think it's pretty fun to write uh, but it's just a programming language that's all what's generally built in Go. Uh, a lot of systems things. Uh, so a lot of DevOps tooling is built in Go because again, Go was actually written, uh, it was actually born out of Google to solve the problems that a company like Google has. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot of, it's, it's more of a systems language. A lot of automation happens with it. Uh, you know, you're not really gonna see a lot of websites built in Go, like web apps built in Go. Uh, maybe it'll have a piece of it that is, but it's a pretty fast and performance systems language, so. Yeah, a lot of a lot of tooling, a lot of tools are built with Go. But yeah, definitely, thank you, SpaceX. There are no, uh, there are no dumb questions. There are dumb answers, 100%. I will, you know, I will be guilty of giving you at least 25% of those dumb answers, but you know, there aren't any dumb questions, so ask away. Please ask away. Cage Crown, what's up, man? How you doing? Appreciate the tier one sub. Good to have you, welcome, welcome. Mm, 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 mm. All right, so that's just that's that's a much, as much as you need to know kind of about Docker itself, but why Docker is a little more important. And so why Docker, the meme on the right is a very important one. Um, and this is the biggest, this is my at least biggest reason why I love Docker, but we'll talk about that. It gives you a consistent development and deployment experience. What does that mean now? Let's go back to what we were talking about in the uh, the containers um, definition where it said, hey, containers give a developer a way to package up um, all the libraries, all of the, the, the dependencies uh, and the things that are needed to make an application work. Uh, and so that's what contributes to the consistent development experience. So we'll split up development and deployment. Um, and so when you're doing development, when uh, usually it's not just you, when people are doing development, uh, you need to get your, your your environment set up. So usually on your computer, you need to install a, a you know, a, a runtime or a, a programming language. So I may need to install uh, JavaScript, uh, a, a certain version of JavaScript or Node or Node.js, a certain version of Node. And for my application to run, I may need to install tons of dependencies. And, you know, maybe I need to install 30 different libraries and there need to be a specific version for my application to work right. Docker makes it easy for you to make that piece consistent. It, it makes it so that the things that you're doing, the things that you're seeing, the things that you're using are the same. Um, and, you know, it makes it so that it's, it's very consistent and you don't really have to worry about, um, you know, things getting out of whack and that part's really nice. Uh, and when they're talking about deployment, they're talking about putting the, the application. So once you write an application, you develop this amazing app that the world should experience. You got to put it out onto some systems to be served out to the world. And that is a, that's a traditionally been a separate piece 
of the puzzle uh and that part can be tough as well for the same reason development of uh, getting a consistent development experience can be tough deployments can be tough whereas maybe the developer upgraded like throughout the process upgraded you know the version of node they were using and maybe they're now using a new version of this package and if i deploy this to a server that does not have this new code on here uh does not have these new versions of these dependencies on here uh this it may not work at all and so a problem you normally run into is or traditionally not normally traditionally you would run into is that hey uh this works on my machine i'm not sure why it's not working in production this is a, a traditionally a dev versus ops problem you all know that i'm pretty passionate about devops we'll get a little deeper there um, but yes it works on my machine then we'll ship your machine and that's how docker was born if it works where you developed it why not ship it uh in the same state as it was developed uh and that's kind of how docker and containers work so no more works on my machine problem and we'll get a little clearer on that what's up sim welcome everybody from sim's channel thank you so much for the raid you're always showing us so much love over here 36 raiders how y'all doing tonight tonight we're learning about containers we are working on um you know we're doing a an excursion a, a, a six part um deep dive into docker so welcome good to have you uh we're still pretty early on so you didn't miss much uh is it feasible to just deploy some projects with docker no compose or kubernetes yes steven yes it is it absolutely is um yes 100 we are going to do exactly that before we get into compose um so 100 is it feasible um yes is it yes it's very it's very feasible to do so and i think a lot i think there are situations where it makes sense to be honest but compose has come far enough that like um i actually think compose is generally a better option um but yeah I, I we can talk about that though how you doing how you doing i love that meme it's the best meme it's a really good meme it's so good so i'm the container minions welcome come on in swarm swarm away Ah, yes, we're gonna talk about cattle and not pets. Um, we talk about that a lot in our kind of uh, infrastructure pieces. Always reviewing me memes. Our goal is to help out, help engineers gain skills, one meme and one gif at a time. Uh, you know, we'll never stop putting these here. I actually, I remember talking to someone as I started to do these things and I, I was starting to put like gifs on the slides and they were like, nah, that's like not professional. I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't think I want to be professional. Like I want this gif. I want the gif on the slide. Like this is what would keep me interested. Like this would, uh, I think, I mean, we, we already know that there's a connection between, you know, uh, uh, movement and videos and things and things that you're learning, but also just like, it's more fun. I don't know, man, it's more fun. We gotta have the memes and the gifts 100%. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Administrators don't like Docker due to maintenance struggles. That is a fun, as a DevOps engineer. So I am a DevOps engineer. Um, I love, I love containers. Um, I love Docker, the management of containers can be uh it's a different paradigm it's just a it's a new paradigm and is it harder i i don't think so um i don't think so because so yes i think the management of containers themselves um add, add a bit of complexity but the trade-off that you get is the consistency in the applications and the ease of deployment um and so like i think that trade-off is huge and i would take that any day over doing this uh the many other ways i i i severely dislike you know uh runtime configuration like using um configuration management tools to deploy things i it's not my thing i if i can containerize it if i can go serverless i will <laughs> but if i can containerize it i will why would you want to treat your stuff like cattle if the ser <laughs> is a server and you don't need to bring it up yeah so very morbid uh you'll hear this a lot people talk about treating things like uh cattle instead of pets pets you know you coddle you keep around you take good care of pets you give them a lot of attention uh, when it comes to systems, when it comes to applications uh, at scale, it's not really feasible. So no more tending to pets. When a pet gets sick, um, you, 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 you know, when a, a cow gets sick, you know, to to keep the herd uh, going, you take it out. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's morbid, but you take it out. Um, yeah, you, you take it out instead of tending to it and making that sick cow uh, better. You take it out and you replace it. 
um and so we'll get deeper with that <laughs> we'll definitely get deeper with that but you know it is a it's a thing and it's it has changed the way that i manage this i have a sysadmin background i've had lots of servers as pets now my first when we have prop when we have problems my first thing is like kill it see what happens kill you know servers having problems dig into it a little bit so that you know what the, you know see if you can discover the problem quickly if it's causing real issues blow it away you know drop it see if the problem comes back uh dig into the dig into the problem uh once we get into a good consistent state but you know that's you know there's a that's all separate from docker itself um everyone has their own ideas about how things like that works um Real curious to see how you add upgrades on to your app that is contained. Great question. Uh, yes, we'll talk about that. Your slides are clearly professional because lack of comic sense, 100% um, <laughs> are unprofessional because of that. You know, we can get to, we can put some comic sense in here pretty quickly, pretty easily, you know, not a problem at all. Uh, yes, Pwn, this does go up on YouTube. Again, exclamation point YouTube. We'll give you the link. They will go up on YouTube after this. All right. I love nuking. Uh, yes, I love nuking containers. Uh, how do, do these new programming languages like go are made? Are they based on other languages? Yep, uh, they're generally written, you know, in C. Uh, they usually, a lot of them are built uh, in C, um, which is another programming language, uh, lower level programming language. But yeah, a lot of them are built from other languages. But yeah, let's keep moving. Um, so another reason why Docker is Docker allows for rapid development. And why does Docker allow for rapid development? Um, it does because of one creating that consistent development experience uh two because it, it 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 when people are talking about this they're usually thinking in terms of one person but for teams and things uh it makes it easier to it makes it pretty easy to uh to transfer dependencies and and run times and things uh, as well so if a new um if a new person needs to get up to speed on a team uh they no longer again need to set up their development environment the only thing that they need to do is to install docker uh and they can kind of uh, do the things that they need um you know and it's a little bit deeper than that but it does allow for rapid development um these are two of probably the biggest factors of why it's been picked up um so heavily in a world you know where the internet is king um and this is also these two reasons are the thing that makes uh these two things specifically are why kubernetes is amazing and why kubernetes you know, everyone loves kubernetes uh it's because of co the containers ability to do these things and the first one is to scale um scalability uh containers are their, their, their ability to scale is amazing. And so due to their size, they're pretty small. Uh, containers can easily scale um, easily and quickly to meet demand. So scaling, scalability, uh, that's exactly what it is. It is uh, being able to add additional resources to meet the demand. So as more traffic comes in, as more people are requesting your application, containers can quickly give you more containers. You know, you can go from, you can go from 20 containers to 80 containers pretty darn fast uh per like pretty fast um depending on how big that container is um you know maybe you know a minute or so um you can really go you can really uh you know increase your um your capacity um by many times and so scaling is pretty dope uh, and not just in terms of the amount but also the size and the capacity as well um and the other one's portability being able to move your code and your deployments around so applications packaged into docker images can run anywhere that docker can be installed we already said docker can be installed on mac linux and um uh, and windows um and so as long as you have at least the same version of docker or later you can move an app to you know to any other computer any other server but you can also move it more easily through environments so you can uh, an application that's packaged up uh you can move it around from the developer's computer to the staging environment or to the development environment to the staging environment to the production environment uh pretty easily it's really easy to pick this application up to move it around to modify it uh to track it to follow it um so the portability of the applications that are um that are packaged up using docker is pretty darn amazing for this talk i need to practice english and i understand your videos to be excellent. oh that's dope you're spanish speaking i i that's that's pretty dope um francis that's that's awesome 
I'm glad you're getting something out of this. Uh, you know, I, I I took Spanish for many years in my youth, uh, and I want to actually get pretty proficient at it. Uh, I would love to do some Spanish streams, to be honest. That would be pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of Portuguese streams on here. Um, I don't. It would be cool to to be able to to go to some to go to some places um, where the native language is Spanish, and you know, be able to communicate effectively and to maybe offer some classes. What about credit? You can pay me to make your own. Yes, that's that's true. Mm -mm -mm. I appreciate that. I appreciate the goat comments. Um, I'm not, but thank you very much. Video config per bug fix branch when they merge, it just keeps the dev. Yeah, there's some very interesting ways due to the way that these these applications are actually packaged up, uh, the ways you can manage them. Uh, it, it gives you a lot of flexibility in the way that you operate, uh, that you create your processes around your development processes and uh, what you can do with that. What's up, Lita? Good to see you. You know, I see you a couple times a day now. I appreciate it. Glad you came through and said hello. Windows Docker containers must be run on a Windows host. Linux containers are portable. Uh, yes, yes, that that's correct. Uh, but all, but 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 Windows containers, Windows containers is not to be confused with Docker on Windows. That is not the same thing. Uh, Docker running on Windows does, in fact, uh, it, it, that is um, that it, that does allow for portability. It allows you to run the same things. Uh, there can be some issues with um, file pathing, but it does allow you to do that. Uh, but Windows containers is a, it's Docker, but that runs Windows containers, things that are specific to Windows. So that is a good, um, that is a good call out though. Windows containers will be able to run uh, soon on non-professional home SKUs of Windows. Yes. So Web Jackson brings up a great point and I was gonna wait till we got to the installation of these things, but Windows has, so Windows, Linux is amazing. Linux is uh, a big, a huge piece of the technical industry. It's, uh, it's, it's at the core of everything. And it's so important that Windows now actually ships with a Linux kernel inside of it. Um, and the Windows 2004 update, uh, not the year 2004, that's the that's the update number. Uh, everyone's computer doesn't have it yet because of some issues with the updates. We all know Windows updates are wild, uh, but Windows has been doing this for a little while. They've been testing this out. Uh, they have something called the Windows subs subsystem for Linux. Uh, the version one, I run version one right now, um, shipped with a little version as well. Um, this is a little bit better. It works a little bit better. Um, but yeah, it used to only work on, uh, you can only get Docker for Windows. Um, when we get to installation, you can only get the native Docker for Windows if you have, I think, Windows Pro and up, uh, Windows Pro and Enterprise. Um, you can't do it with Windows Home or Student or whatever. I don't remember, I don't remember which one they which ones they are, um, which is really annoying. There are other options. Uh, we'll talk about those. But yes, now um, Docker I think is working on a way um, and Windows for a way for this not to be the case. Um, yeah, your name for the character in the presentation. I do not, but feel free to give a name to the to the character. I this is it's like a pair with feet. Um, so yes, Mr. or Mrs. Pearfeet, because it looks like he or she is wearing heels as well as has hands. It's kind of creepy and I'm gonna move on because it's kind of scaring me the more and more I look at it. <laughs> okay, any questions so far about Docker specifically? Uh, you know, not, not Docker is a container engine, a container runtime. So not too much different from what we learned about containers, but a few things that are specific to Docker that are good to know. Cause we're about to get into the lingo, um, which is important. If you update to version two, I want to update to version two so bad. I have version two on my laptop and it works really well. I've been testing out a lot lately, but can't get it yet on my desktop. Five to ten minutes of DSL on three PCs. Ah, yes, cache servers are great. That that's pretty smart to do because five to ten megs is not uh, not amazing. Um, I have also found that as as your 
containers get larger and larger um your upload speeds really matter uh, upload speeds really matter and uh where i work has amazing upload speeds and my house doesn't so whenever uh, we have one container in particular one all of them are pretty you know uh, pretty space conscious one uh for a number of reasons is pretty large and every time we usually don't have to make updates whenever we do i'm always at home and it takes it forever to upload and it's so frustrating it's definitely frustrating um yeah we we will talk about c groups um and namespaces we yes we will talk about those a little bit we're not gonna dive super deep but uh when we get there ask some specific questions when we get there uh, if you have like we're, we're definitely gonna dive into that uh on thursday actually we'll be diving into that okay let's get started with the lingo because the lingo is um i don't think it's difficult but there's a lot of words and a lot of terms and phrases that are used uh, that sometimes make this a difficult thing to really lock down, but an image, a Docker image. So this is the only thing on here that's going to be the actual definition because I thought when I read this, when I when I read it, um, when I was creating my own definition of an image uh, to make it easily memorizable, I thought I just thought it was really good. This is the, the, the one you can find on the Docker documentation, but it's a read only template uh, that contains a set of instructions for creating a container that can be run on the Docker platform. And now there's a couple other words in there that we're going to define later or talk about later. Um, but it's a read only template. It's a template. Um, and it provides a convenient way to package up applications. So basically when they talk about the developer packaging up these applications, uh, it puts them together into this read only template, uh, that is called an image. So when you pack up, this thing, it's like burning a disc, it's like burning a DVD. You know, we all did that back in the day. Uh, we, we, we downloaded a, uh, you know, illegally downloaded a movie to our computer and we took that illegally downloaded movie and we burned it to this disc. We burned the image to the disc. Uh, and so we created this reusable, uh, template. We, cre we created this reusable thing that we can stick into a DVD player and watch. And, you know, we can, we can take this thing and use it over and over again. And that's what the image is. It is, it is the, it's the, it's the DVD. It's the image of your application. It's got the things, all the things that you need. It's the package. Uh, it, it's that actual package, um, that you're going to be using. And that is what an image is. Um, I again, I really like to use the DVD analogy just because, um, image versus container is probably one of the most confusing things for people um and yeah we're gonna talk about container but i think the image i think the dvd thing will come into play when we get there but an image is the package when you package up that application you package it into a docker image all right now how do you package this thing up how you know how like we say package it up we say the developer is going to go ahead and package this thing up into this read-only template that is the image um and how do we do that and one of the ways one of the ways the main way that people do it is via something called a docker file okay um and so a docker file is a text document with commands that are necessary to create a Docker image. So in this Docker file, we'll be learning all about how to write Docker files. We will be writing a number of Docker files, uh, but it is just a text document. It is, uh, it's it's kind of infrastructure as code. It's, it's a way to codify uh, the things that you need to create an environment for your application to run. And we'll look at a few, we'll look at some examples of a Docker file tonight, but it's just a text document and it has all the commands in it that are needed to be able to create a Docker image. And again, this Docker image is the template of things that you need for your application to run. It's that read only template that you need for them to run. So stop there for a second. Talked about image and a Docker file. And their relationship is that a Docker file is used to build an image. So you use a Docker file to create an image. All right. Write the Docker file text file that describes, you know, that issues commands needed to create an image. And it, that's the output that packages up the application uh, and creates this image for you to use over and over again. Images can be used over and over again. A single image can be used over and over again. And we're about to talk about that. The image, what's up, uh, Mr. Salsa? How you doing tonight? The image is responsible for making some code into an application that runs on Docker. Yes, uh, well, 
um the image is the it's the image is um is the template of all the things needed including the application itself uh to be able to run inside of docker um yeah and the docker file allows you to create that so like a class and container is an instance yeah well yes we'll, we haven't learned about containers yet but yes we'll, we'll come right back to that that's really good um once we get there the compile class yeah more like a compile class we're gonna learn about docker layers as well but we're gonna keep it real simple right now these are getting confusing yes they do it it does it does get confusing but an image again i'm just imagine imagine an image right now in the beginning you know imagine that if you wrote an application you wrote some code that you want to run somewhere and it needs certain things to run you take that you take all that stuff and you burn it to a cd and that's the image you burn it to this dvd and that is a docker image and this dvd can only run in docker so you take take your application all the stuff that needs to run burn it to the cd and now you can run it inside of docker but you know it's just the dvd um and a docker file is how you you know it's how you burn the cd you use a docker file uh to burn what you need to the cd and that once you have the image this is when you can now use a container so an image is not a container an image again is just that dvd a container is what happens when you put the dvd into that dvd player a container is a single running or stopped instance of a docker image and so your application we may take it and we say go go ahead run my i want you to run my application right now and your application may start up and it may run but you can use that same image to run this your application again maybe you want to run it you know five times maybe you want to have 10 running containers of your application maybe you want to run it on this system maybe you want to run it on that system over there maybe you want to run it on that system up there you take that one image you take that one dvd and you can play that movie as many times as you want in as many places as you want um you can also burn copies of that dvd you can move this image around however you like but a container is a running instance uh, kind of of that Docker image or or stopped, uh, but it's an instance of that Docker image. And so, so what Steven brought up earlier is that um, the, if you're, if you're in an object oriented programming, um, that a class, um, that the image would be the class and that the container, the one running container of it would be an instance of that image class uh, that might make it a little more confusing for a lot of you but uh yes a container is a single running instance of this image so that's the relationship one image to many containers that's the relationship so a single one over here to many over here one image to many containers you can run any number of containers from a single image again that image is just a template that has all the stuff that's needed to run this container so you can use that one image to run the container as many containers as you would like docker file is a build script essentially yes one thousand two thousand percent it's really just a build script that's why they say commands necessary it's really just a build script it says hey i need all these things to run this application go ahead and include them in this container and you just got to make sure you get those things right it's really just a build script uh, and the commands, I actually really like them because the commands are pretty simple. Uh, they use plain English words. Uh, I think it's very clear of what's happening in a Docker file. Once you understand, um, you know, basic Linux commands, I think it's very easy to build one of these. Um, you're not having to learn a new language at all. It's just Linux commands. If you don't know any Linux commands and you want to learn some Linux commands, please join us tomorrow for Waddle, where you will be learning uh, a lot of Linux commands starting tomorrow. Does a Docker image end up as a file? Great question. Great question. Um, like Linux, uh, everything in Linux is a file, a directory, or a binary. Um, so really, everything's a file, to be 100% honest. Um, and so what it ends up it, as is these layers of, of resources um, and instructions. Uh, we're gonna dive into that a little bit deeper. So, um, on the to you to like to us kind of it looks like that it kind of looks like uh you know one little tangible object but it's really uh, a bunch of pieces of things 
Um, so it kind of ends up as a bunch of files in the background, but to you, it's kind of just one. Uh, so yes, it does kind of end up as a file. So the image is what the container uses to set up the environment for the application. Uh, yes, yes. The the image tells that container, you know, what the what everything looks like, and the container is a you know a running version of those things. More like files end up as an image, yeah. Um, if you booted up a fresh Linux machine, ran the commands in the Docker file, and yanked up the hard drive. That's what an image is. Ah, that's that's perfect. I love that. I love that. That's that's actually really that's really interesting. Uh, it's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, every time you you build this new image, every time you create this new image, uh, it's like you know um, starting up a fresh version of Linux um or windows but linux and installing a bunch of stuff all the stuff that you need uh putting your application on there getting everything set up as you would if you were trying to run the application normally and then uh and then once you're done you know like pulling out the hard drive and using that hard drive everywhere like uh you know you've you've created on that fresh computer the the uh, space and the environment for your application to run and now you're using that uh you're using that setup to run everywhere it's, it's very man that's that's good i like that a lot that's a good one um let's see let's ship the code enhanced deployment is a docker image an iso file um no it is not an iso file but you can think about it like an iso file but it is not an iso file it's uh this very similarly i mean the concept is similar to an ISO file, um, but it itself is not a an ISO file. Oh, blah, I didn't go anywhere. You know I have a big forehead, man. You know, you know I have a big forehead. It's still here, you know, just, you know, very large, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, let's see. It's an image is a blueprint for a container. Uh, yes, image is a blueprint for a container and a Docker file is a blueprint for an image. So goes from goes from docker file to image to container now i do want to be clear because i've talked to people about this before docker files are not the only way to create images they are not uh it is the standard way it's the way that you should create images it, it's the way that you should do it why why should you do it this way because it gives you documentation it gives you a way to repeat building it. So once you write a Docker file, you can use that Docker file to build the image as many times as you want. Um, and you can build it every single time if you'd like. Uh, you can, you can actually start up a container based off of somebody else's image or another image elsewhere. And you can install the things that you need manually. You can, you can do that and you can create an image from that so you can actually do all the things that you want to do manually and you can create an image from that you shouldn't do that because it's not repeatable uh you know you can't go back and do it again uh there's no way to see what happens there's no, there's no documentation for it but uh i've had lots of discussions with people people are really like no you have to create an image from a docker file i'm like no you do not <laughs> you do not have to i promise you you do not have to one thing I'm confused about now is Docker is a container engine, right? Yes, Docker is a container engine, correct. When I first learned about Docker, the person who taught me to compare containers and images uh, to files and, a thumb, and thumb drives, you can put the same file on the multiple thumb drives and each drive can run that same file. Yeah, uh, I can see that. Put the same file on the multiple that yes that's correct uh yeah that's a good one that does work like your own live cd yep what's up uh woolly mammoth how you doing we're learning a little bit about docker tonight yes even yeah we talked about that yep you can turn you can turn a container into an image if you'd like um we will be doing that on here as well can say your container starts from Ubuntu latest, then modify it, then release it to a registry. Yes, yeah, so we're about to learn about registries, all that stuff. So registry was next on the list. So perfect, I'm glad you brought that up. But again, container um, is a single running 
or stopped instance of a Docker image. So just kind of remember that progression. It goes from the Docker file to the image. So it creates the, the, the template, it creates the DVD, and then that image can be used to deploy any number of containers. Um, and that's kind of the order that it goes in. Now, let's talk about uh, registry. And if you're actually, if you <laughs> I want spaghetti, I want spaghetti as well. I do actually have spaghetti for dinner, which is gonna be great. But if you ever are confused about whatever the uh, the GIF is, it's a container. Now it's it's not holding all the spaghetti very well, but it is in fact a container. I typed in container and I picked the one that made me laugh the most, which was this one. I don't know why this person tried to close this like this. Uh, it's very funny to me, uh, but it is a container. Um, this one just had the word registry in it and that's why I grabbed it, but a registry. What is a Docker registry? So a registry is a storage and content delivery system um holding named docker images lots of words there but all a registry is it is a it's a repository for your docker images this is why the words matter it takes a little while to get up to speed with the lingo you create these images these images tell docker how to run an application and you can put these images places so you can put these images in something called a registry um the biggest one the, the most popular one uh, being docker's which is hub dot docker.com and this is where you can go uh to retrieve them so it says it's a storage and content delivery system so uh again what that means is you take these uh kind of like github uh for code uh you take these images and you push them up to a registry um for 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 storage and for other people to be able to grab them for you yourself your systems to be able to grab them and that's what you do. And you can pull these images down to your computer. So it's, you know, it it says holding name Docker images. You give these images a name and you push them to a registry where you can then pull from. But yes, it is like, it's exactly like GitHub for code. Um, um well, I won't say exactly, but very close to it. Um, uh, it's, it's just a repository for this hub.docker.com you do have to sign up for it it is free um, but it is where you can go to find a, a bunch of official images uh, non-official images uh it's just a, it's a free place to put your images uh you can host your own registries uh, there's a number of other places to do it but you can host your own and it's very interesting because a docker registry is just a docker container uh so you actually to host your own you actually just spin up this container uh, and it, you now have a place to host your, um, your own, uh, Docker images. So yes, you can do this. Um, because of these Docker files, because of what we talked about here with these Docker files, it is not essential that you use a registry, um, that you use, it's not essential that you use a registry. And that's usually confusing the people as well, because you have, I mean, I recommend using one. Uh, we'll get into the best practices and like why you would want to do certain things and kind of some of the just, you know, um, the, my, my personal beliefs about how to use Docker properly, but, um, Docker files, uh, this is what you may want to keep around and you can always build an image based on this file. So if you write this file out the way you want it, you can always create an image. Um, so you don't need to, you don't necessarily need to put it anywhere, but you know, it's uh, there's there's costs and there's benefits to both. Um, so yeah. Now everything is a container. That's true. How meta do you want to get? Um, we we can we can always get extra meta here. You know, can they be private and only shared with customers? Yes, uh, you can. Uh, you can create private. Um, you can have private repositories for your. I don't even know why I did air quotes. They are repositories. Yes. Uh, I think they cost though. Um, I don't think you, okay. So you get one private repo for free, but you know, this is the, the GitHub model. GitHub used to be just like this. Um, and for you to get any other, uh, private ones, you gotta pay. But like I said, you can host your own. Um, you know, you can, there's free ones on M Amazon's ECR is free. I believe, uh, there's other places to host them as well. You can host your own if you would like. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, yep. You got it. Can you use a container like VMs to run and analyze? Okay, 
these are great questions and these are the questions that are very important to docker and these are the ones that you all will have heavily throughout this uh excursion and so container uh, container um scanning containers is a very interesting thing um whether or not it uh is valuable um or makes any sense is debatable uh yes you could you could do that um yes you could security security is an interesting topic we'll, we'll get into some security of containers as well and some of the differences between vms as well um what i do want you to to, to know right now we're it's gonna be the first thing that we learn next time but when you're getting into containers when you're talking about docker vms virtual machines are designed to be um they're designed to 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 be permanent or uh, to be semi-permanent they're designed to um to last to stick around for a while containers are not um containers are designed to be ephemeral um they're designed to to do their job really and go away um and so they what this means is uh, one of the biggest you should not you should not think about containers as a persistent thing. And I know that could be really weird. You can be like, what are you talking about? You know, then you should not think about them as this persistent thing that stays around for a while. Yes, we will use it as such, but there are some paradigms that enable this. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 really interesting. So they are, uh, once, we, once we start doing stuff with them, you'll be able to more easily differentiate them from VMs in your mind because they, um, they're not like VMs. Uh, there's no Google Classroom. There is a Notion link and it's right there. I just hit contained and it's right there. Uh, let's zone that over there. Yes, got service discovery, all that stuff. Okay, so let's keep going with this. Uh, 821, perfect. Uh, let's get through these so we can install it. And I can make sure to get you out, out of here in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, um, so that's all the registry is. It's a repository for your container images, for the images. Your code, these Docker files are text documents. These are text documents. So these can go into GitHub, just like any other piece of code. They can live and they do live inside of your code base. Um, and so, I, like I said, I'll show you an example of, of a few tonight. Um, and I think this is the last one, uh, two more. So tag, um, tags are important. Tags allow you to add a unique identifier to an image name. Uh, and so if we build an application and we call this application, uh, we were built, we were building one um, earlier called Synapse. We were building a, an application called Synapse, a tag, uh, allows you to identify this with some metadata um, that goes, it's actually included in the name of the image. Uh, and so it might be synapse uh, colon V1, and that will be the tag. Version one would be the tag, or uh, I can tag it colon initial release. You can make it whatever you want. I think it has to be all lowercase letters and numbers, um, but it's just an identifier um, on to on something you'll commonly hear people say, go ahead and tag this image, or could you please tag this image? Um, and so it's basically a unique identifier um, that's added on to the name. Uh, all images, all images have tags. Uh, sometimes you won't see one. If you do not see one, it's because it by default, things get tagged with the tag latest. Um, and so because that's the default tag, you do not have to put that every time. Again, we will, on Thursday, we will be hands on with this stuff, uh, just introducing you to it now so you can start to in your mind, um, you know, move the stuff around. Um, but it's just a unique identifier. Uh, you might say, isn't the name a unique identifier? No, the name is not a, the name is a unique identifier for, uh, for the kind of, uh, for the name of the image. Um, yes. Uh, it's more so the name of the repository, to be honest, um, of, of the kind of bigger holder folder um, for the image, but the tag allows you to identify a unique version of this thing. Um, yeah, that's a tag. And I think this is the last one, um, which is build. And so I, I've said build a couple times, but this is how you initiate uh, the commands of a Docker file. 
to create the Docker image, you build it. That is what it's, that's what the act of creating this is. It's a build. And so, uh, a, you know, building, that's what this refers to running a Docker build is taking a Docker file. Uh, you must have a Docker file to do a build and it builds it into the image uh, that you can use later to deploy some containers. And I think that's the last of the lingos and we'll get into Docker installation. Any questions about these? There's many more words. There's much more verbiage, but these are, I think are the core ones to really understand. And the ones that I want you to understand the most is just the difference between an image and a container and, the, and their relationship. Containers are, are basically run, they're created from images. Uh, using a single image, you can deploy any number of containers. Uh, and that is their relationship. And Docker files just good to know because you use that to create an image. I'm telling you, it is, it's okay to be confused on this piece. You, you've seen it, you've heard it. Uh, and now you can do the things, you know, whatever um, uh, things, tools you use to memorize things and to kind of dig into this stuff. Um, now you can go forth and see what you can do to make that stick. All right, so let me get to these questions before we get to the installation, but we'll hop into the installation of this. Uh, uh, um. Do you need networking shops to learn how to map these Docker containers? No, you do not need any networking shops. Uh, there is a bit of cool container networking you can do. We're gonna dive into that. You do not need networking shops. Uh, I will teach you the basics of what we need. You really just need to understand ports. Um, maybe subnetting, um, but really just need to understand ports to be 100% honest. Um, so don't sweat that at all. After these six weeks, my terminal skills will be great. Yes, they will. Hey, I'm telling you, they're gonna be phenomenal. They're gonna be so good. And you're gonna be the best uh, terminal, terminal person out there. Well, maybe well, that sounds bad. Terminal user out there. How about how about that? It's a little bit better. Uh, definitely better. I hope. Um, I need to I need to learn some more networking. To be honest, uh, we may have to do we may have to do a, a series where I'm learning networking deeper, uh, and you guys can learn with me. How do you interact with Docker? You interact with Docker from the command line D flare. Um, and so there are other tools, there are actually tools, uh, Kitematic and some other ones that will give you a GUI interface. Uh, they, you know, don't really work all that well. Hold on one second. All right, that was weird. I felt the house shake. Um, so it might be storming. Is it storming? Not storming. Maybe my wife came in, who knows? Um, but yes, so let's see. Um, what were we talking about? I forgot what we were talking about. That's my bad. When you feel the house shake, your mind uh, it goes, it goes somewhere else. But yes, how do we interact? We interact via the command line. So like I said, if you are worried about that, um, check us out tomorrow on Waddle. You'll learn all the things that you need to learn. So you can think of Docker as a way to run programs with Linux without having needing a Linux OS. Uh, no, you still need a Linux OS. Um, e e yeah, you still need a Linux, uh, underlying Linux operating system. Um, it, you can think about it as just as a way to, again, pack, it's a way to package up applications um, and ship them around to be able to run anywhere else Docker exists. Uh, so it gives you a consistent way to create and to deploy applications. Where do you get these pictures? Uh, I get them from Giphy or Google or wherever. I get them from anywhere on the internet. Uh, some from Reddit, you know, but. Mm -mm. Plus, seven teach uh, teaches master my networking. Yes, yes. Uh, hey, look, please, please do that for me. Please do that for me. Hey, I, we set that up right now. Okay, you're VIP. All right, I'm here to learn. Same for course, super popular for networking. I'll check that out too. I'll definitely check that out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I know, I know. Hey, uh, it's like. It is, see, times like this are when it's sad. It's like, dang, I would know if someone was here because the pub, but you know, times change. Then the world might be ending when the power goes out. I mean, so like these storms have been kind of crazy the past couple of days. Um, well, a couple of days, I mean like yesterday, um, but like it's supposed to be like storming the next couple of days, I think. 
we'll see okay so let's just get docker installed that's all we'll do tonight this shouldn't take too long but i'm actually going to do it uh the most verbose and longest way possible just in case anyone else is diving into linux this is also to help the people who are just a little precursor to some of the stuff you're gonna be learning tomorrow in the linux course it's gonna be over your head um because we're gonna be uh just running through the docker installation docs um for anyone running mac you're gonna have the easiest installation of this it's gonna be super easy i think you just download a uh whatever the was a dmg i think you just download a dmg and it allows you to install it um and so the links are here for anyone who wants to do it windows windows i told you would be a little bit more interesting if you don't have if you don't have windows uh home um I mean, if you have windows home uh you can't just do this uh so they have they do have docker for um they do have docker for windows um but it's for uh windows 10 pro and enterprise and up um windows 10 pro enterprise or education um but not home and so there are other options and they tell you some other options here i posted one below uh there are some other options uh wsl2 is the option they try to give you but most of you aren't going to have that um most likely um and if you don't know what that is you probably don't have it but i encourage you to check out if you have access to the windows subsystem for linux um not important that you follow me along with this installation but uh your homework is to get to get docker installed before next class uh i think again like i said people with windows you're probably gonna have the hardest time um you're probably gonna have the hardest time but there's an easier option for you it's uh it's an older solution but it's this thing right here called docker toolbox uh, and what this does is this installs Docker inside of a virtual machine. So it's gonna, it's, if you don't already have it, it's gonna install a, a virtual box for you. And it's gonna install a, a little version of Linux inside of there. And it's gonna allow you to actually interact with Windows as well. Um, but it's pretty cool. It, it is pretty cool. I may install that for you just so you can see what that looks like. Uh, but again, if you're on Mac, super easy to do. If you're on Linux, you could use a package manager. I could install Docker using apt or something else. Um, but yeah, if you have Windows 10, you should have. Okay, I thought I thought it was still tough on Windows um, because you had to have Windows Pro. Uh, let's see, latest version of Docker. Windows 10 home machines must meet the following things. So yeah, the only way you can actually do it is if you have the newest update. Um, I don't know, it might be a problem. It might be a problem. Uh, might be a problem for, for Windows users, uh, but maybe I can run through it as well. Um, but I'm gonna run through it on Linux just because uh, I want you to kind of understand what's happening. Um, and like I said, I provided all three links right here. Mac is gonna be the, your easiest installation. Um, and so, uh, this, these links will take you to the Docker docs. Uh, the Docker, Docker documentation is actually pretty good. I don't know when they added this dark mode, but I kind of like it. Um, I kind of like it, but yeah, I could actually install it via package. Uh, but I'm going to run through and I'm going to install it uh, by hand. And so there are a couple of different options for your release channels. There is uh, the stable release channel, which is going to basically, um, be the most stable it's gonna you know it's gonna it's got all the updates that go out matter um and they're the ones that are important and you know they're not gonna put out push out any risky stuff uh but test the test branch and the nightly branches are going to give you uh more frequent updates with uh less tested features uh so you might get newer features early uh stable is likely the one that you're gonna want uh, to use um but yeah we're gonna go th go through here and we're gonna install it. So I'm doing mine on Ubuntu. Uh, I can't remember if I'm using Pop! OS or Ubuntu, but I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna follow, again, I think technical documentation, uh, I think it is. Uh, it takes time to understand how to parse through them and to understand without having to read every single thing. We're just gonna go through it again. I think it's gonna be a good, um, you know, a good exercise into getting the stuff installed, but this is my windows screen so let's go back over here let's actually go here in. let's do this so i can copy it and paste a little bit easier uh, docker for linux 
and we'll change this to dark mode make this a little bit larger and let's scroll on down to installation per distro and let's get going on ubuntu really quick i am running ubuntu 20.04 i am pretty sure uh darn it so ubuntu 20.04 changed the keystrokes okay so it's control alt all right so i'll open up a terminal here and let's get ready to rumble plus 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 is that big enough uh i'll make it a little bit larger there we go all right let's get going on this so prereqs ubuntu 20.04 Am I running Ubuntu 20.04? Yes, I am running Ubuntu 20.04. Excellent. Um, and so that is a prereq, a prereq for this. You can uninstall old versions here. It's, it's saying, hey, you're gonna install this uh, the kind of the, the default way we say install it, uh, but make sure you're not running uh, any older versions. And so, like I said, I could use my package manager in Linux to install this. You might be able to use Brew to install it. You also may be able to use Chocolatey to install it on Windows. I'm not 100% sure, but you can run this just to be safe. Safe. This is gonna use my package manager to remove any older versions. I'm pretty confident I don't have anything installed. Uh, and so I'm gonna try to do this. And unable to locate package Docker engine because I do not have it installed on this computer. Um, cool. And so there are but there's a bunch of stuff to parse through here to be 100% honest. Um, but um, it's kind of just giving you some of the options that you have um, installed using the repository. Um, so I will do I will do exactly what they say here. Now there are two different versions uh, to choose from. Uh, there is a community version and there is an enterprise version. Obviously, you want the community version. The enterprise version allows for uh, some signed, um, it, like it allows for like these signed images, and I don't know. There's some there's some weird stuff you get with it, but uh, yeah, you can just do what they say. So we're just gonna run the commands they give us, and it's gonna update our repositories, make sure it knows what it can get. So I'll run this. I have no idea when the last time I ran an update was, but I also just want you to get more comfortable. We're we're gonna be doing a lot of things from the command line. I just want you to see me doing things from the command line. You know, I'm not typing in much. I'm just copying and pasting. I'm not doing anything fancy, but copying and pasting what they give me here. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna install some necessary packages uh, that's gonna be needed to install Docker. I'm gonna paste that in. And that should move up pretty quickly, hopefully. All right, so that's pretty quick, pretty quick. Um, now it's gonna have me add in. You shouldn't copy and paste. You shouldn't copy and paste into your terminal. Uh, where should you copy and paste to? No, I was, uh, I was like, ah, well, hey, I'm the, like I said, I'm the, I'm the king copy and paster. I'm the, the greatest ever. Um, and so all this GPG key is doing is it's allowing us to, um, to confirm uh, was well, allowing us to, to add in a, a key so that we can confirm our fingerprint um, and confirm that this is exactly what we expect to have happened. You actually don't need to do this part, um, but I recommend it, you know, I recommend doing it. And we get this. Security reasons. No, that's fair. So, okay. Oh, that's actually, uh, that's, that's, that's a good, uh, that's actually a great point. Um, I, so I've copied enough from Docker docs to understand. I, I know what the commands are that I'm running in with that. I'm running into the, into the computer. Uh, so you don't copy and paste from places. You don't know what you're, uh, what you're doing. Um, you know, uh, make sure it's a, it's a reputable place. Uh, also pay attention to, to make sure you know what you're doing. Like I know what each of these commands is. Uh, I have a pretty extensive background in Linux. Uh, so I, I, you know, I know what I'm doing here. That's very fair. Uh, yes, do try to avoid commands using sudo, uh, but you know, all of the sudo commands are here. So, uh, so I'm just gonna, you know, continue down this path, but that is a really good thing to bring up. Sometimes I don't think about those things because you know, I, I've copied and pasted from this site so many times, uh, but I will absolutely, um, I'll start, I'll start bringing that up again. That is something to be, uh, to be aware of. Mm. 
Uh, so this is where you would change this command is where you would change your uh your release to from stable to nightly or right here to nightly or to the test builds uh, if you needed to do that thanks for demonstrating expert mode yes uh sure uh you know i want you all to check out the technique and the, the speed at which i copy and paste now i will tell you guys this a lot of people don't know this in linux in Linux, you can copy by highlighting. All right, so I highlight with my mouse. Look, just so you know, I'm using a single hand. Hold on, let me go down to my thing here. I can paste by middle clicking. A lot of people don't know that. Only expert copy and pasters know that you can do that. And boom, it's really nice. It does speed things up. I stopped doing it only because when I was moving in between Linux and Windows, I, you know, my mind couldn't figure things out. But yeah, uh, you can, in fact, do that but i'll take this as well uh so now we're at the part where everything up here was getting us set up with the places and the, the things that we needed to get uh this installed and now what we're doing is actually um installing what we need from the repositories and so we'll paste this in yes i actually do like in windows for both the command prompt and for PowerShell and for Windows Terminal. If you're not using Windows Terminal, please use Windows Terminal. It's a great product. I can't believe it took Microsoft this long to come out with it. You can right click in there and it's pretty dope. Pretty nice. Mm -mm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I miss it. I miss it. I really do. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so we got that in here. And so now, um, you can install a specific version, but we do have it. Uh, I think we're in, I think we're installed. What did this install? Docker C. Yeah, I think we're all installed now. Okay, what time is it? Perfect, perfect timing. All right, so what they tell you to do is to verify that everything's installed by doing sudo docker run hello world. And this already is taking us into what we're gonna be learning next class, but it's gonna have us run our first container and this is how you test if docker is working there's another step that we need to do um that we're gonna do in a second but um <clears throat> gonna hop off running a pac-man update <laughs> i i feel you i feel you all right so i ran this i did docker run hello world let's talk through this real quick this is just again like i said an introduction to next time it says hey you try to run this thing I'm unable to find the image hello world latest. This is the name of the thing. When you see the colon and this, this is the tag. Remember I said everything is tagged as latest if you do not put in uh, a tag. Okay, you're not supposed to know what this is yet. I'm just kind of walking through what happened. It's okay to be confused. Uh, and what it does is it says, hey, whenever you tell it to run an image, so, you, so when you, uh, when I said you can basically uh, deploy any number of containers from one image, you're running, you're running that image. And that's what's happening here. And this is actually an image right here. Hello world latest is actually an image. And we're gonna run one instance of this container. And so this image, you need to have this image around for your computer to use it, right? So it says, hey, I don't see this image locally. I don't see this image on your computer. And what it does is it says, cool, I don't see it. I'm gonna go pull this from the repository that I know about. And so by default, Docker comes set up to pull from the Docker Hub repository. Um, and so what it did is it pulled this hello world thing from Docker Hub. And so we can actually go look at that real quick. And I think it's gonna make me log in. A little bit larger and we can do Let's do hello world. And so it actually got it from this repository and it got it from right here. Um, and it pulled it from this place. And so it pulled this image down that exists here and it pulls it down. Once it's done, it goes ahead and says, hey, I downloaded it, then it runs it. And so this is what the hello world Docker image does. It just spits out, says, hello from Docker. It shows you that your installation appears to be working. And so if you can get this, that means Docker is in fact working. To generate this message, Docker took the following steps. And so basically they're now telling you what I just told you. The Docker client contacted the Docker daemon. Um, and that's just the, the, the thing that's running here on my computer. Uh, the Docker daemon pulled the hello world image from Docker Hub. So that image that we talked about, it pulled it down from Docker Hub. 
the Dr. Damon created a new container from that image. I like how they put that in there. New container from that image, which runs the executable that produces the output you are currently reading. So this application, the application that's in this hello world uh, image does exactly what we're seeing here. This is how we're seeing it. This is the application itself. Um, the Dr. Damon streamed that output to Docker client, which sent it to your terminal. And so it can tell you to try some other things and we could let's actually try this really quick. Let's try this really quick to try something more uh, ambitious. You can run an Ubuntu container. So we talked about operating systems and you know, all that stuff. And so there's a container that exists that has the tools and packages that you're used to in Ubuntu. Uh, and so we can grab that as well. So, um, you know, let's, let's just run this really quick. And we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn about what all this stuff is. Boom, this is actually what I wanted you to see. Uh, and I try to run it right now and you might've tried to do the same thing when you first install it. And I get a permission denied. This is uh, something that's not Docker specific. This is actually a Linux uh, problem and it's a way that we installed it. Uh, there's a, some more steps to the installation. So I'm actually gonna go up really quick. Um, and it ran the first time because we ran sudo docker run hello world. Sudo is a command that allows you to escalate your privileges in Linux. It allows you to uh, to perform commands. Uh, it allows you to, to, to perform tasks as administrator, like on Windows, you know, you right click, you say open as administrator. It allows you to assume administrator privileges um, for that command. And we don't wanna have to do that every time we run Docker. Uh, it's really annoying actually. Um, and you know, generally you kind of don't want that. And so they'll tell you how to do that a little bit later. Uh, optional post installation steps over here on the left. Um, and it says manage Docker as a non root user on Linux. The administrator is called root. Uh, and so we are not root right now. Um, you know, give you a little bit of Linux. You want to know who you are? Type been who am I? And I'm mastermind. I am not root. I can sue the root if I want. I want to be administrator. Now I'm the administrator. I type in who am I? I'm root again. This is not necessary to know. This is also not Docker related. This is Linux related, um, even though Docker runs on Linux. So uh, if you want to set up your Docker installation, I don't think you have to do this on Mac to be, uh, to be honest, uh, you gotta do this. And so we're just gonna be managing some Linux permissions here really quick. And so I'm gonna add my user to the Docker group. Uh, the, so that group already exists. I'm gonna add my user to that group now. And now if I do Docker PS, I don't think it'll work uh, because I have to log out and log back in. Um, yeah. And so I've tried, I've tried to do this before where like there's, there's different ways to, uh, to log out in this session and create new sessions, uh, but that never seems to work in Docker Desktop. I generally have to log out every single time. Like I've had to do full restarts before and I don't know why. I've done a lot with Linux permissions. I don't know why uh, that happens so much. Um, but I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if it works this time. Um, I've had really inconsistent experiences with Docker um, and its permissions. Uh, yeah, see, log out and log back in. Um, I'm actually gonna reboot just because we have time. Really odd, really, really odd, but cool. While that's rebooting, let's see. Did the Docker file for the image know that it wasn't latest? Um, yeah, so by default, if you do not provide a tag, uh, it does know that it's latest. Um, and Docker underneath, uh, when you install it, it knows where to get that from. Um, it knows to go to the Docker hub. You can actually change the default repository in which your Docker daemon connects to. Uh, so like, it, you know, Docker, we're using Docker and it's set up to pull from there by default, but um, we can change that if we'd like. Uh, but yeah, um, I actually wouldn't recommend that for a number of reasons. Um, there are better ways to do that. Does that mean tags are version control for containers? Uh, yes, you can, so no, but you can use them as a form of versioning. Uh, not really, there's not really any version control you can do with it. Uh, you should version control the Docker files. You version control the Docker files. So Git is great for that. Um, it's not version control, but it does allow for versioning. Yes, 
you can use tags for versioning version one version two version 1.2 whatever uh, you can but yeah not version control perfect willie mammoth drops it in there perfect um <laughs> I, I i like that i'm not i'm not mastermind i'm d i'm i'm master mendio i'm master mendio i like that i am that's what everyone calls me um so we have the same gnome shell i i don't know what my gnome shell is uh my gnome shell is yes chrome os dark compact shell yes that's exactly, exactly what it is but now that this is back up can i use docker now and i can use docker i know it's small um but yes don't sweat that don't like if you're trying to follow along and install don't sweat it take your time i included a video uh, i think i included a video in there did i um there's no video there but if you're having trouble reach out into the slack or reach out uh or check out a youtube video um like i said everyone's probably gonna be fine except for windows users to be 100 percent honest uh if you are a windows user who is running who is who is running uh who doesn't have the latest update for wsl2 and does not and is running home uh there is an option in here like i said for uh docker toolbox and docker toolbox is really nice uh it, it installs it installs a virtual box for you and automatically sets up a virtual machine for you to do this in uh and it's really nice do your best to get it installed um i'll try to help anyone who needs help who's having a lot of trouble getting it installed but um yeah, that's, that's all we're going to cover today. We're going to dive into a lot later, but let's actually look at what we're going to be. If anyone's wondering what the, like, what we're going to actually be covering in this course, and you didn't see it on the site yet. So this was today. Just installing Docker was the last thing that we were going to do. Now, next time, we've already dove into this a bit, but we're going to be diving way deeper into Docker Hub and understanding that. We're going to learn all about running Docker containers, how you do it, the, all the flags and stuff that you have, uh, d a different container commands. So notice I'm using the word container because uh, these are specifically about containers, um, you know, different commands you can use to manage containers, container management, volume mapping. So we're stepping way up. We're stepping way up into things. We're going to be running a lot of commands. We're going to be doing a lot next time. So that will be on Thursday. Um, and so I didn't want to throw too much at you in one day, but we're going to hop straight into it next time. So, um, try to get it installed first. Uh, I didn't want to, I really just didn't want to start doing this stuff without everyone having a chance to get Docker installed in some way, because I know it can be a little bit of a hassle depending on your system. And then we're going to be diving into all stuff, you know, all the stuff, persistent data and understanding that starting to, you know, on third class, we're gonna start building via Docker files and layers and you know, practice building these things and networking and entry points and best practices and multi-stage Docker files, multi-container applications. So this will be when we get into Docker Compose. And then this one will be after we've learned all of the kind of core concepts, we'll be revert, we'll be taking an application that exists uh, and I'll be teaching you how to reverse engineer it and not really reverse engineer it, but how to Dockerize it. There's gonna be a lot of positions where you're gonna need to be able to do this to a lot of companies are like, hey, look, we're moving to containers. We have an existing application. How do you break that application down? How do you go about uh, turning it into uh, a container image uh, and so that's what we're gonna be covering throughout these three weeks. So I hope that gets you a little bit excited. And if anyone wants to, here's the link for anyone who needs it. Check that out. Um, let's see. Papa OSBM doesn't want to accept my password for the disk encryption. That sucks. Uh, yeah, I mean, your options, Matt Peanut. If it's not taking your password, then yeah, make a new one. That sucks. That really sucks. Dark containers with a Git shot that they're built from. Yeah. And so <clears throat> it's also worth noting, and we'll talk about this more in depth uh, when we get to the image section, but different tags can point at the exact same image. So, you know, you could have, uh, you can tag with multiple things. We tag with multiple things. The Git commit, the, the actual tag name that we care about, um, and sometimes the environment uh, plus a little bit extra as well. Uh, so you can do you, there's a lot you can do with some of this stuff um wally wally i'm sorry you missed it you know it'll be up immediate it'll be up on twitch uh for you to watch on uh, and youtube as well it'll be here for 14 days and it'll be on youtube as well so sorry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I know. I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. Cool. Yeah. If you already have Docker Stall, perfect. Um, perfect. But I, I can, I, I can assure you, lots of people are gonna uh, run into some issues. So feel free to reach out if you did. The Docker file for that image. Uh, know that it wasn't the latest missing, and also tell Docker where to get it. Uh, so the Docker file for that image. The Docker file for that image uh, exists elsewhere. We can probably actually go and click to see it. That it wasn't the latest. Um, so we didn't do anything with Docker files tonight. Um, when I did that Docker run, that doesn't do anything with Docker files. That image that we pulled from hub.docker.com. And we looked at hello world. Uh, it was built off of a Docker file that we don't care about. Um, but it's probably here. Yes, this is the actual Docker file. This is the entire file that created this thing. Uh, this is the file here. Um, this is what a Docker file looks like. <laughs> um, it really is what it looks like. It's just pretty tiny, um, but no, um, the Docker file did not. I, I'm not sure I understand your question completely, but um, it, if whenever you run the build, whenever you run a build, if you do not specify a tag, it automatically tags it as latest. And so if you never specify one, everything defaults to latest. And that's how I know that latest was the right tag. Um, and Docker knows where to get it because like I said, it's it's set up like when you install it, it's automatically set up to pull from here by default, to pull from Docker Hub by default. Mm. Ugh, Cobol. With running containers with three weeks begin. Uh, let's do it. Let's do it. You know, we'll, we'll be the best. Mm -mm -mm. We'll be a better option. Install Docker in a Linux VM or WSL. Uh, honestly, Linux VM to be 100% honest, unless you have WSL2. I have not used WSL2, but um, uh, uh, like. I think an easier option um, might be Linux VM. Again, if you do have WSL2, um, I've heard really amazing things about Docker support for it. So try it out. But I, you know, I say default to the Linux VM, to be honest. When do you stream the Wado course? Uh, it says July 7th through 23rd. Oh, yes. Sorry. It's, it's uh, I guess I didn't put, I, uh, maybe I should uh, put that up there better. It's supposed to say. Oh yeah, Mondays and Wednesdays. So uh, Waddle is Mondays and Wednesdays. This one is Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, so we'll be back with Waddle tomorrow. Um, yeah, so Mondays and Wednesdays. How does it know when it's not? The oh, great question, great question. Okay, so when it's not the latest, um, it knows it's not the latest because I could do um, this. Uh, when I did that Docker run, uh, uh, R run R. Um, I can do a tag and I can say, hey, maybe maybe if there's a version two, I can do a version two. And that's how this would know that it's not the latest. Um, you specify, you specify the tag when you build it. So the Docker file doesn't have any information about what version you have. Um, you specify that when you build it, you tell it what to name this thing to tag it as. Uh, but this right here would tell it to pull version two instead, well, the, the tag v2 instead. And by default, it would still pull from the same place. By default, it always pulls from the same place. You can tell it where, to, if, if you're running from a different repository, uh, it actually, the repository can be a part of the name. So you can put the repository like this, like, uh, like it'll be like this dash repository, blah, 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 um, slash. Uh, and so this would actually be the name of the the full name of the image if I want to grab this from somewhere else. Like this would be the other repository and not Docker Hub. Um, so I guess, you know, we'll, we will dive into this piece. Um, but yeah, by default, it always pulls from Docker Hub unless you have, unless you see a slash in there, uh, then it's probably pulling from somewhere else. But by default, it's kind of pulling from. Can you use Docker without the internet? Yes, you can use it without the internet. Uh, you can use it without the internet. Uh, but you need to have all your images already. Um, so if, if you already have every image that you need locally, yes, you can use it without the internet. 
Um, look, syntax looks like SQL. Yes, it is very SQL esque, like with your big select statements, capital letters. Yep, um, ki kinda. So it's comparing what you have to that repo. And if you didn't have that version, it was just pull it first. Yes. So if I tried to run, if I do this again, if I run that um, hello world thing again, this time when I run it, actually, I don't need the sudo. Pull the sudo off. If I try to run it again, uh, we don't get those initial messages that say, hey, I tried to find this locally, couldn't find it. Um, it already have it locally. And so it didn't do those things. It checked locally first. And if I do a Docker images, uh, it tells me I have the hello world. Um, I have the hello world image here and it's the latest hello world latest here. And so, like I said, we're gonna be diving into this a little bit more. Um, we're gonna have this a lot, a lot more, not a little bit more, a whole lot more. I didn't want to get into it too deep tonight. Can one edit tags after creation? Yes, you can. Uh, you can edit tags as many times as you want, uh, but that tag will still probably, I mean, yes, you can edit tags. You can basically re-tag it um, as new things uh, and delete the old tag if you want. The old tag still stays around. Uh, a tag though is just a pointer. It really is just a pointer at, uh, at an image, to be honest. So like at a collection of layers, um, we don't know what that is yet, but I'll get there. Uh, just notice how there's this image ID thing here. Watch this, watch this, Docker tag uh hello world latest as uh actually i don't think it's tag i don't think it's tag i can't remember uh hello world v1 okay it is and now so if i do docker ps oh docker images i it says i now have it says i have two different images now it's showing two hello world images one with version one and one with version two. What I did here is I tagged latest. I also tagged it as V1. It's pointed actually at the same exact image ID. So uh, here they're tagged as two different things and they're shown as two different things, but they reference the exact same image. Uh, and so, you know, it, it you can re-tag as much as you want. You can edit it after creation. Um, yeah. What time is Waddle? Waddle is uh, same is same time, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'm on the East Coast of the United States, 7 p.m. Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, and so we're down one episode, so you can watch that here if you need to. Is a tag like GitHub's tag? Uh, yes, yes, you can, yes. It's, it's kind of like GitHub's tag and it references, you know, the commits or whatever. Uh, yeah, it is like that. Um, but these tags are the default way to uh, to get your named unique identifier, um, rather than branches. So, yeah, but that's it. That's it for tonight. Uh, hopefully tangible takeaways. We always like to do tangible takeaways for the end of the ends of these things. Um, uh, the tangible takeaways for tonight are one that you learned a little bit about, uh, where were we contained? Uh, let's see down here get back to here uh were that you learned that hey there are these things called containers and all containers are 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 a way um for uh developers to package up uh applications all the pieces uh that the application needs its dependencies its libraries its, its binaries that it needs to run and package those things up and ship it all together uh, we also learned that it's a way to run an application where it's isolated from the host os or the host system um we learned about some of the, um, we learned about a little bit about the differences between virtualization and containers. I think this will become more apparent to us as we um, actually get hands on and run these things. So, um, you know, keep keep this image in your head. Like I said, I love and I, I hate this image at the same time, uh, cause I think you have to understand a bunch of other pieces first before this makes sense, but it is a good one to be able to reference. And that we learned that containers are not Docker, are not equal to Docker. Docker is a container engine, but containers are, you know, the technology itself is not Docker. Uh, there are many other container engines um, we learned about why you might want to use Docker, some of the good things that it has about it, scalability, portability, uh, consistent development experience, which is really nice. Um, and then we learned about some of the different, uh, the, some of the Docker lingo, 
Docker files and images and containers. Those are probably the three that I want you to really focus on, a container versus an image. And um, and what about Docker files and some of the other things. There will be many more of these terms as we go through, but these are the most important ones. Uh, and then we got Docker installed. So again, the homework for you is simply to install to whatever operating system you're using, whatever way you can, any means necessary, watch any number of videos that you need, get Docker installed so that when we uh, get to next class, you can hit the ground running with what we're gonna be doing. And like I said, the great thing about Docker is once you have Docker installed, uh, it's probably gonna install the latest version of Docker for you. Uh, as long as you have the same, you know, the same version or later, anything that we do on here, you'll be able to run no problem, no matter what operating system you're on, you'll be good to go. Question, please go over sudo ad group once more. Yeah, so, um, so I was basically just running the commands that we, um, that Docker gave us to be able to install this. And actually I can go through and look at my history and this should still be there. Um, and so we ran a couple of commands. Uh, once everything was done, we ran um, sudo ad group and sudo user mod. So these have to do with Linux permissions. Uh, and, the, and it has to do with the with what can access certain files and directories and things. Um, and so sudo, all sudo does, uh, and again, this is more part of the Waddle class, but still good to talk about. Sudo allows you to escalate the privileges of your command. It allows you to run this command as the, the administrative, uh, administrative user, really. So it says, hey, run this as root, run this as the administrative user. So sudo allows you to escalate your privileges of that command. The group add, um, group add allows you to, um, so Linux has a, um, has this paradigm of users that own the file and groups that own the file and their permissions for these things. So my mastermind user, I have a mastermind user and a group. Um, and so these determine, uh, what permissions people have. And so these are actually Linux permissions over here and Docker, the way Docker is set up the Docker group, there is a Docker group on the system. It allows you to do Docker things. And so for me to be able to use this Docker group as my user, I had to add my user to the Docker group. So we had to make sure the Docker group was there. And then we had to add our user to the Docker group so that we could run Docker commands without needing to be root. So before, if I tried to run any of these commands without the sudo in the front, they wouldn't work because I, you know, I didn't have the permissions to run these things. But once I added myself to the group, I now have permissions to do this. And now I can run commands like this without the sudo in the front so that I'm able to uh, run the commands that I need to run. But that will be coming. So good question about that. Uh, when are we getting into, when are we getting into Linux permissions? That might be a, that might be a little while actually. Uh, day four, so next Wednesday, uh, if you want to learn all about Linux permissions, everything I just talked about, uh, next Thursday, uh, next Wednesday, next Wednesday is when we will be learning all about Linux permissions. So check that out. There you go. Good to have you. What, uh, again, thank you so much for the three month streak. I appreciate it. You've been, you know, you've been a, a, a valuable patron of the channel for a while now. I really do appreciate it. Good to have you. Can you update the schedule in the description of this channel? Yes, I can. I'll do that right now, actually. Uh, yes, I can. Um, Cause that stuff is pretty old. Not much, but there's an, I, I appreciate the bits. Every bit counts, Wally Wally. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Way to close us out. All right, so we always have to, you know, head over and raid somebody at the end. Um, Mr. Smoothie, actually, absolutely good to have you. Thanks so much for coming through. Who are we gonna go over and raid today? Let's find someone to head over to. Let's see. Anyone doing anything cool? Raid Mastermind Gaming. Uh, well, that channel is not a. Uh, so my new. Oh, so first off, my new game streaming channel is uh, is not that. My new game streaming channel is Stone Cold stream Austin. I don't, I don't game stream, but I will be game streaming when it's just for fun. I do play games, you know, it'll be fun. So Stone Cold, we do have a mastermind gaming channel, which I never use, uh, but Stone Cold stream Austin, uh, is, is, you know, give it a follow. I think there's like, I think I have like eight followers. I would appreciate more followers. And maybe if I get more followers, maybe I'll start streaming over there. Uh, we're, we're actually gonna be doing something with the mastermind gaming channel too. Um, 
like I said, we're, we're we're trying to do some esports stuff. Like not me, but uh, we're trying to do some esports things in Baltimore City. Uh, I'm in Baltimore. If anyone did not know, um, and with some of the uh, programs that are in Baltimore City, we're trying to do some esports stuff. So uh, yeah. Oh, who twenty one? Oh, we're gonna we're definitely gonna do some gaming. Uh, but let's head over to let's head over to build and we're, we're gonna head over to Ashley M Boyer. All right. Ashley, uh, I'm gonna type that in. Let's see if I can get that the first time. For anyone who doesn't know what rating is, we're basically just all gonna go over to this channel. Feel free to stick around if you want. Um, we we just try to discover new people who can teach us new stuff. I'm gonna stick around for a while. If not, if you gotta get out of here, appreciate you spending time with me. I'll see you tomorrow if you're interested in Waddle. I'll see you on Thursday if you are interested in uh, if you're just coming back for Contained. But hope everyone has a great day tomorrow. Hope everyone you know get some rest, get some dinner. I don't know what your time zone is. Have a little fun. I'm gonna go do a little more work. Uh, unfortunately, I'm all. Also going to update the um the what's that thing called i'm gonna update the calendar in um down below in the panels that's what we're gonna be doing so let's go ahead let's just say hello to ashley and boyer uh, hopefully that makes her day um and find out uh how we can build an accessible uh re oh, accessible react components this is uh, actually pretty cool but peace out y'all have a great night